efforts to expand infrastructure. He is a significant contributor to climate change transportation emissions. Now, this primarily from the burning of fossil fuels in cars, trucks, planes, ships and trains releases greenhouse gases into the atmosphere which trap heat and lead to global warming. Our reporter Andreen Kilemi highlights on how African countries like Kenya can embrace sustainable development without a negative impact on the environment. Kenya, like many other developing countries, faces a complex challenge when it comes to infrastructure development and its impact on climate change. On one hand, Kenya's efforts to expand its infrastructure and transport systems are crucial for economic growth. However, on the other hand, the way in which this development happens can either overstress or ease climate change. When climate is changing, it's not just the emitters who are affected, but even the ones who don't make any emissions become affected. Nairobi, Kenya's capital city, for example, is a rapidly growing urban center with a population of over 5.3 million people who have various transport needs. Nairobi also ranks in the top 10 most congested cities in the world, and with this, the city faces major air quality issues. Challenges such as traffic congestion, in addition to outdated vehicle emissions standards and inadequate vehicle maintenance mean that harmful pollutants such as carbon monoxide, nitrogen oxides, particulate matter, and volatile organic compounds are pumped into the air. This is bad for the environment. It's very comfortable that we all want to drive our own cars. However, um, globally, 39% um, of emissions related to transport come from personal vehicles. Yeah, so that being the case, so a lot of it come from personal vehicles, a lot of it also come from heavy commercial vehicles. So when we are transporting things via these systems, via everybody driving their own cars, the emissions we are creating from the sector are much more rapid. A recent report by the UN Environment Programme shows that millions of used cars from Europe, the United States and Japan to developing countries are of poor quality and contribute significantly to air pollution. The second national communication report to the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change further shows that personal passenger vehicle that uses diesel contribute 32% of air pollution, while those that use petrol contribute 68%. Buses that use diesel contribute to 90% of air pollution, while those that use petrol contribute 10%. The freight vehicles that use diesel are responsible for 90% of air pollution, while those that use petrol are responsible for 10%. And the reason this climate is changing is because we are now emitting a lot more gases that are creating a, warm eff a warming effect in the atmosphere. So what this does is when the warming effect is created, we start getting um, challenges in relation to weather and the climate itself. Temperatures are rising. Uh, this is causing ice to melt. So the glacial ice is melting. We are getting a lot more uh, haphazard weather. So it's either coming with a lot of intensity and also the seasons have changed. The rapid urbanization and construction activities also generate substantial amounts of dust. Construction sites and paved roads and road repairs contribute to the release of particulate matter, which can cause respiratory problems and reduce visibility. For construction to take place, there's a lot of use of cement and Cement is actually one of the, in, the, in, in, the, in that particular sector, it's actually one of the greatest emitters because for you to create cement, you need to have limestone. Limestone has something called carbonates. So when carbonates combine with water and other things, then it also creates CO2, so it increases CO2. So there's that balance of we want to industrialize, but also at what expense. Um, again, also there is, coal is a natural resource that we have in plenty but again using coal means that we also coal increases the uh, carbon dioxide in the atmosphere so we are increasing the effect in the atmosphere as far as a uh, coal is concerned so there is that challenge of infrastructure how fast do we want to develop and how much emissions do we want to to create in the atmosphere as populations swell urban areas expand these people will need housing and because of this the building sector alone 
accounts for nearly 40% of global energy-related CO2 emissions, the construction of major infrastructure projects in the city, including the Nairobi Expressway, the Thika Superhighway, the Standard Gauge Railway, and the newly renovated Uhuru Park saw the cutting of countless trees to pave way for construction. Our roads are all growing. The population is also significantly growing. And it is very unlikely that this is going to change because the population is still going to continue growing. So what we need to do as a country is look at when we cut, then we must replace. The replacement itself will have to take a lot of public goodwill and political goodwill because this means we are going to have to even talk to people to maintain the forest within their own um, homesteads, to maintain their forest within their own properties and to also build around. Overall, the construction of roads and bridges can have significant environmental and climate implications and careful planning and sustainable practices are essential to minimize these impacts and contribute to climate mitigation efforts. <laughs> Kenya's adoption of electric vehicles as a means to curb climate change is a positive step towards reducing greenhouse gas emissions and promoting sustainable transportation. So electric vehicles have they only they only emit water vapor so they don't emit the the greenhouse gas vehicles because they use a, an electric motor and a battery so their their emissions are less so they have less effect on on the atmosphere. Now Right now, if you are, for instance, in Kenya to say, let everybody have an electric vehicle, they're also very expensive to have. So we cannot do a rapid change for the population to make sure that everybody is using this. Addressing climate change is a complex and urgent challenge that requires concerted efforts from individuals, communities, governments and businesses. If Kenyans can only opt for walking, biking, Capooling or using public transportation whenever possible, then that would reduce individual vehicle emission and would be a great solution towards sustainable climate change. Andrin Kilemi, TV 47.